Good morning, Mosaic. Happy Sunday, May 8th. I hope you are well. I am. Uh, thanks again for the introduction. Um, love to my friends, uh, Judy, we've been at it a long time. Tracy, love you. So many other people there at Mosaic. Uh, <clears throat> I am well. I hope you all are well. Um, I had just tried to, to record this outside and uh, it got too sweaty. So uh, forgive some of the some of the backlight. Um, I'm in beautiful downtown Orlando at my girlfriend Joanny's house. Uh, I'm here with our boy Odin, who is uh, an old soul, uh, beautiful old dog. Uh, I've prepared a sermon for us this morning. So shall we? And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts grant us not only the light of wisdom to understand these words, but the fire of conviction to put them into practice. Amen. Will the fool become wise? <laughs> I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Uh, I did just kill a church, but the Christian tradition is still my background. Jesus is still my guru, and I don't need you to believe anything about him or to agree with anything in the Christian tradition uh, other than I'm going to ask you to stay open to the possibility that he has some good news for you. That's it. So <clears throat> I want to start at the ending because I many times have tried to start at the beginning and never gotten to the end. Uh, probably five times in my career in 20 years. Uh, and I'm talking about the, the Sermon on the Mount. In the Gospel of Matthew, this is sort of the, the best of Jesus, the cliff notes of his ministry and ethics and vision, uh, the essential Jesus. That shows up in the Sermon on the Mount. And, and we never get to the end, anytime I've tried to teach through it. Uh, so, so I went ahead and looked at, at the end and realized there's maybe as good or better a sermon in the very end than all the stuff leading up to it. Um, but I want to give you that stuff too, at least my paraphrase. We don't know if this is exactly how it went down, but in the official Jesus tour DVD gospel of Matthew, the picture is that Jesus gets up on this hillside, uh, in the Galilee, this sort of rural region in the ancient near East. And he says, this is my paraphrase of the whole sermon on the Mount. So just buckle up my paraphrase. He says, the people who you think are blessed are not necessarily and the ones you think are the worst are the blessed ones. You can show the world your faith in such a way that people can experience God through your living. And it's not only about beliefs, but about practice. Like, sure, don't murder, but let's look deeper. Like before the murder at our anger. Like with adultery, let's not because we're better than that but let's also get into our hearts and intentions and see where that behavior comes from. Like with divorce, the issue isn't that somebody broke a rule. The issue is in the brokenness of a relationship. Let's get behind the rules. Don't take vengeance. Love your enemies, not just your tribe. That's adolescent stuff. Grow up. Shut up about your generosity so that it can also be humility. That's where the real gift is. Don't perform when you pray. Don't perform when you practice. Don't fake spirituality to impress others. Ooh, be good without a broadcast. <laughs> Listen more, talk less. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Money makes surrender really hard, especially if you pretend money and spirituality are two different things. <laughs> Worrying about things isn't helping. Try not to make things your God, but learn to find God in all things. Don't judge anyone outside of yourself. This way is meant to be a mirror, not only a lens. Ask, seek, and knock, for in the asking is receiving, in the seeking is finding, and in the knocking is the door opened. Don't be surprised by loneliness on the way. If the way of love and of life were easy, everyone would be doing it. Watch out for false prophets and wolves in sheep's clothing. 
not everyone wearing my brand is living my values. <sighs> therefore, therefore, that was my summary. That was my paraphrase of the Sermon on the Mount. <clears throat> we got there in just over five minutes. Therefore, in light of all of this, about life and practice in this way of living, what Jesus calls the kingdom of God, uh, what Martin Luther King Jr. called the beloved community, the way, this way of living, love and life and light. Therefore, all right, so we got through the whole Sermon on the Mount. Thanks for, for hanging with me. Therefore, and here's the very end. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. <clears throat> I promise you there's good news in there. Let me show you. I didn't preach Easter uh, for the first time in 16 years this year. <sighs> I'm going to be honest with you, it felt pretty good. <laughs> uh, my church died. That didn't feel good. My church died. The church that I, I planted a decade ago Uh Happy to, happy to chat about that at some point with those who are interested. Um, appreciate the love from those who were there when we had the, had the memorial. Uh, all, all is well. Spirit is at work in me and in us. We're good. Uh, so I didn't preach Easter. The church died. Sometimes, sometimes the only thing left in love is resurrection. <laughs> I know you're Unitarians, and, and, that, and that's cool. Uh, sometimes, something so dead that the only way ahead is resurrection, is life again, is some, some kind of life after that death. Sometimes the only action left in love is to acknowledge that the house has been destroyed. And then to sit in the unknown of it. Of if and how it can be rebuilt. To, to see if we'll learn our lesson. If we'll find some strong foundation and, and slowly, graciously, <laughs> slowly, mercifully, slowly, gently, slowly, patiently, and also very, very slowly, 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 we learn the work of resurrection is actually the work of rebuilding the house. <laughs> it's not a magic trick. It's, it's a spiritual practice. It's a commitment like all the other ones. It's becoming something and someone over time that we're not today. And, and the gift the gift of rebuilding, the gift of rebuilding is the thing itself. <laughs> um, the rebuilding is the thing itself. It's not like we need to rebuild uh, the church <laughs> so we can then have a church. The idea is that in the rebuilding, in whatever form, whatever comes of the rebuilding, that is the church. That's the work. Uh, Mosaic has lived many different lives in many different places. I've known you in so many of them. Uh, and now again, Mosaic, where we are. Again, in the wake of the pandemic. Who are we now? How are we now? Uh, 
the things with which we struggle. It's not our fault. We didn't do it. Uh, and yet there are, there are ways in which it feels like, again, the house has come crashing down. What does it mean to acknowledge it and to rebuild, to find some rock and, and to rebuild on that? Uh, Netflix, uh, the sacred text of our time. Netflix top 10 deadly games. Tell them that you heard it in church uh, or whatever you call mosaic. Uh, there's a character in this show, deadly games, called Earl Embry. He's a, a master bomb technician, but really he's like the sage. He's Yoda. He's the he's the guide and the girl and the guru. And and uh, Earl says he says this. There's a story about a fool. <laughs> who built his house on sand, a big, beautiful house, right on the beach. The first storm <laughs> blew that house right down. But his neighbor, a wise man, he built a house too. But before he started building, he drilled down through the sand and anchored his foundation in bedrock. So when the storm passed, his house was still standing. Maybe, maybe bedrock means faith or substance or truth, right? This is mosaic. You tell me. I don't tell you. Whatever that bedrock is. Uh, and the way Jesus tells the story, these are two separate guys, right? There's a wise man and there's a fool. Uh, but I've, I've been convinced by 20 years in ministry, two kids, a divorce, five versions of a church that I tried to start for two decades and just closed, I've been convinced that maybe this is the same guy, <laughs> right? Maybe this is the same guy. And I got this from Netflix. Earl says this, but the, the fool had to build that house on the sand and have it come down. <laughs> maybe once or twice, maybe his whole life before he built it on a rock, before he becomes wise. And whether or not you like parables or believe in Jesus or what you think about the Bible, that story is pretty much how it works. Um, I, I want to say that's a spiritual truth that transcends a religious tradition. Uh, we need, very often, we need the death of, of the sacred object. We need the loss of the thing that promises us certainty and satisfaction, whether that goes by the name God or Mosaic or America or money or approval or democracy. And whatever that sacred object is for, for me, for you, for us, for Mosaic, uh, whatever the sacred object is, right? If things would just, then we would, right? More people, more people online, getting back together in person, Mosaic back at community service, whatever it is, whatever the sacred object is that you hold on to and go, man, if we could just get back to that, then we'd be, right? We could rebuild the house to that. We look forward. Part of the work of spirituality is we look toward, not away from that death, the loss of that object. And really what we're talking about is that version of the house, um, that arrangement. Uh, we surrender it. And that's hard. It's hard to wash a, watch a house wash away. Uh, we surrender it be, because that's both the path to freedom and it's the only path to rebuilding. <laughs> right? You can't be holding on to the old house and rebuilding a new one. The only way to rebuilding a new house is to let the old house go. And what we've also found is, is that in that surrender of the old path, the old way, the old house, there is the genesis of profound bonds between the communities building the house. In the story, in this reading of the story, we're all the fool. We're all the fool. I mean, God, I just turned 40 and closed the church that I've like spent my professional life building. In the story, we're all the fool. Anyone who's built anything, loved anyone, lost anyone or anything, we're all the fool, the, right? The, the question is not which one are we, binary, right? Are we the fool or are we wise? And if we're whatever, religious enough, spiritual enough, then we move from being the one to the other, then we're not the fool and then we're wise. The question's not binary. It's not which one are we, fool or wise. The question is, 
will the fool become wise, right? That's spirituality, right? Not this stupid scapegoating one or the other. And if you're not us, then you're out, right? It's not which one are you? It's will the fool become wise? Will we surrender what we have to surrender so that we can be and accept and become something more? Will the fool become wise? We hope so, right? That's the act of faith. That's the act of faith. And, and like you've heard, I mean, I've, I've built enough and lost enough and loved enough and lost enough uh, that I think I can offer this good news. I think what Jesus has to say is great news. I think the fool can become wise. Uh, I love all of you fools at Mosaic, and I think you are wise. And I hope that I'm a fool who's becoming wise uh, in, in the building and the surrendering and the rebuilding. But I guess here's the good news that I would leave you with this morning. Worry not, friends. God is not to be finally apprehended in the house that stands or falls. God is the name of the rain that comes down. God is the name of the streams that rise and the wind that's blown and the beat against our house. And God is in the perseverance to stand. And God is in the falling. God is in the sand and God is in the bedrock. And God is in the process of building and of loving, of losing and of rebuilding again. And if it is still my sacred vocation to say good news, let it be this. God is in the one who can become wise. I believe we, I believe you as a people mosaic can become wise. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on a rock. What is that bedrock? On what do we build the house called Mosaic? If that's an exciting question, welcome to Mosaic. You're in the right place. Love, blessings. Amen.